Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're all doing good. So today's topic will be on the dynamic safety stock calculation in SAP based on the plan independent requirement quantities and also the uh, coverage profile that we basically configure and maintain it in the material master. So let's get into the details and see how this works. So to start with uh, the prerequisites uh, to enable the dynamic safety stock calculation, the first thing is that we need to create uh, a coverage profile uh, in that particular plant. So that would be part of the configuration and you can enable that by, uh, you, by using the transaction OMIA where you're going to create the coverage profile on that, uh, in that particular plant. So while configuring the coverage profile, there are a few uh, key parameters that you have to maintain in the configuration setup. So that will be based on the indicator. So let's say if you want to define the indicator uh, or the range of coverage to be in months or days or weeks. So that's how you're going to set the period indicator here. So in the next slide, we have uh, more details like in depth, what basically these uh, fields describe. So these play a key role in uh, executing the safety stock calculation um, based on the coverage profile. So here uh, we can see the details of these fields. So the first thing is basically the period indicator. So M, it basically stands for the month. Uh, on the left side in this particular box, you can see the drop down options we have uh, available uh, under the period indicator. So if you want to do it on a monthly basis, then you have to choose the period indicator as M. And if it is a week, then you have to use it as a W. And if it is like a planning calendar, then it should be as a K. The same way you have the next field, which is uh, basically the number of periods uh, that we have to define here in the average requirement section. So these periods uh, are basically used to calculate the average daily requirements on that particular safety stock. So here, uh, for this particular example or the coverage profile, I have defined the period indicator as month and the number of periods as three. So we, which means that the PRs that I have created in the respective periods. So the first three uh, PARs will be considered in the calculation in the uh, range of coverage calculation. So once we go into the, the topic, it will be more uh, clear for you to understand. So this is a brief uh, uh, understanding on the fields and the values uh, why we should update uh, in the coverage profile. So let's say the, the number of periods here are three and then the type of period length here we have again the drop down options as one should it be in work days or two should it be in calendar days or three should it be in the standard days. So here I'm using uh, the period length as uh, three which would be the standard days. And since we have defined the periods as three, so how many days does a period contain? One period, right? So let's say we are talking about a month. So how many days should that particular month contain according to my planning calendar? So here I have maintained the number of days per period as 20 days. So this would be basically the standard number of days that are available for the planning in that particular period. And next we have the range of coverage in the first period. So here minimum uh, value and also the maximum value. But we always need to uh, ensure that there is a target days updated in the range of coverage here. So here this range of coverage will be basically the number of days the safety stock should be covered in the first period. So here, if you look at the description, the range of coverage in the first period, and the same way we have the range of coverage for the second period and the range of coverage for the rest of the horizon. So each of these uh, periods or the range of coverage can have its own independent values. So for the first period, let's say in this example, so how many periods should be considered? So let's say how many PIRs uh, should be considered in the calculation. So here I have mentioned it as three again. Okay, so this is how the uh, profile has been configured. So the next one is basically with the master data. So from the master data standpoint, it is uh, a very simple, like uh, if you go into the material master of the material for which you would like to uh, calculate the safety stock, 
So going to the material master in the MRP2 view and there you would see a field for the coverage profile. So the coverage profile we created here is 001 which is basically for 5 days, for 3 months and then 10 days. So this description you can correlate to the range of coverage that we have defined over here. So for the first 5 days it will be considered for 3 months and then after the uh, 3 months or the 3 periods we defined here then 10 days will be considered into the calculation part. So then we assign the coverage profile in the MRP2 view. That's it. So now we are done with the configuration setup and also the master data maintenance. So the next and the most important point is with the calculation. So there are a few formulas uh, how the uh, dynamic safety stock will be calculated. So I be, uh, basically created it with a few constants. I mean for us to easily understand. So to get the value of A, we should basically sum the PR quantities in that particular period. So in the period, let's say since we have defined three periods in the coverage profile, so the PIRs for those first three periods should be summed up and that value will be divided by the period that we defined in the coverage profile. So if, if I go back to this, so the number of periods that we have here is three right so then we have to calculate that i mean we have to divide that by this particular period multiplied by the standard number of days in each period which is again 20 right so if we do that we will get the value for a and then for the constant b the formula is basically the output of uh, a multiplied by the target days of the first range of coverage profile so that would be this one for the uh, first period which is 5 okay and then once we get the output of B so that will be summed up with the first month PR quantity so that is how SAP basically calculates the dynamic safety stock and based on this particular value uh, the planned order will be generated by also looking at the net requirement calculations right so if we look at the process on how this basically works in SAP, the first thing is that we have to create a plan independent requirement um, based on the periods we defined in, uh, in the setup. And then we are going to execute MRP and then the plan orders will be created from the output of MRP where the quantities will be calculated from the, uh, save, from the dynamic safety stock calculation procedure along with the net requirement calculation. So once the plan orders are created and then we can evaluate the results and see if the values are coming out consistently or not. So let's run this complete process uh, in SAP and see uh, and try to understand how this basically works. We are in SAP. So let me uh, go to the transaction MD04. And this would be my test material today, P100. So we don't have any stock available or there is no plan independent requirement uh, open at the moment. So if I show you the uh, material master in the MRP2 view, we can see that the coverage profile 001 has been updated uh, on this particular code, right? So now the next step to start with the process is I have to create a plan independent requirement. So I'm using the option. Right, so let me create the PR uh, maybe starting from May 2022. So I would like to start with uh, 20, 30, 40, and 50. So these are the quantities that I am planning for the next four months. So I'm going to save this and refresh. So now we can see that the plan independent requirements are created. And the next thing is that I have to run MRP. So I'm executing MRP, going back to MD04 and again refresh. So now we can see that the plan orders are created for each of these independent requirements. But in the standard uh, MRP procedure with the net requirement calculation, you can see that the plan orders will be created only based on the requirement from the plan independent requirements. But here, in this case, the first uh, LSF or the PIR, it has a requirement of 20 uh, pieces. But whereas the planned order ha has been created for 28 pieces. 
similarly for the other periods as well the second pir has 30 but the plan order got created for 32 and the same right so you can see that the plan and uh, the plan order created through mrp are not according to the requirement quantity of the pir but these are basically calculated based on the dynamic safety stock calculations and then the quantity will be checked with the uh, available quantities and then the planned order quantity will be updated during the mrp run itself so to evaluate these results we can basically uh, click on this particular icon where you can uh, switch this total view into a period total and from here we can see the independent the pir quantity so for the fifth period we have Uh, the pr quantity has 20 30 40 and 50 so this part we are clear and coming to the receipts we have 28 32 45 and 44 these are basically the planned order quantities that has been created through mrp so let's use this particular example uh, into an excel and apply the formulas uh, that we discussed uh, earlier so if i open the excel here okay so for the first uh, period we have a pr quantity of 20 right and second period we have 30 40 and 50 so i updated the same value here the pr quantity is 20 30 40 and 50 for the four periods and if i look at the configuration in omia let me show you that in omia i go to this coverage uh, profile and here we have it so sorry if i go back to the excel so the no, number of periods that we have here in the coverage profile is basically three periods right so i updated the value and let me just show it this way so now we have the uh, number of periods coming as three and the standard days uh, in the particular period is 20 and the target days in the first period is 5 so if i look at the formulas here so here we have the sum of the first three periods right which is 90 so let me go to that so here we can see that this is the sum of first three periods for because we are trying to understand the calculation for the first planned order so now it is 90 and then for the value of b and that is basically the uh, number of periods multiplied by the standard days in that particular period so that is 60 here right and then for the a the value is basically divide the 90 with 60 so then it would be 1.5 right and then for the calculation of b we are basically adding uh, we are basically summing up the target days plus the value of a sorry uh, multiplied by the value of a right so that would be 7.5 so 1.5 into 5 is 7.5 and to look at the planned order quantity uh, this is basically the sum of the first pir quantity plus the value of b so now we see it as 20 plus 7.5 so now it has been 27.5 and of the quantity being in pieces that will be rounded to the nearest value which is 28 so now if i go back to sap so that is what i see the planned order quantity coming out as 28 okay so now if i look at the second planned order for the uh, second pir which is having uh, the planned order quantity as 32 so if i apply the same calculation here but i just need to change the periods right why because for the second pir it would be the second three periods so it would consider the second period the third period and the fourth period pir so 30 40 50 that gives me 120 and di divided by the uh, number of periods into standard days so that would be 2 in total and then the value for b this is basically the target days into the value a so that gives me 10 but here the planned order quantity it is coming up okay so here i need to change it right why because we i need to sum it up to the second uh, pir so it would be uh, b3 the cell b3 so that is coming out as 40 so this is correct but why in sap are we 
seeing this quantity coming out as 32 for the plan order. Why? Because the net requirement calculation is also being part of this uh, dynamic safety stock procedure or the calculation part, right? So for that reason, for the previous period or the first period, we are left over with an excess of eight pieces, right? So the planned order now created is 40. So it should also look at the available stocks on that particular period, so which is eight. So this available stock will be reduced with the calculated planned order quantity, which is 40. So that's the reason we came out with the planned order quantity as 32. So you can check that in the uh, period totals over here. So the values that we see here in the target stock, so the 7.5, 10, 15 and 8.33. So these are nothing but the value of B. So earlier we had the value of B coming out as 7.5. So based on this, the planned order quantities will be calculated by looking at the PR quantities as well. Okay, so this is our basically the uh, dynamic safety stock calculation works. That's all for today guys. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also click on the bell icon to receive updates. We'll meet again soon in our next video. Until then, take care, stay safe, stay healthy. Bye-bye.